Here on planet Earth, there is few places more fascinating to visit than a reef full of corals. Reefs are essential to our survival as a species, but thanks to our terrible behaviour, they are really struggling to survive. In today's episode, we take a look at what reefs are, the challenges they face, and especially what can be done to restore them. So see you right after the titles, and like people say in Japan. So you surely heard it before, corals are really important, we need to protect them, save the oceans. How dare you! But why, what makes some rock looking thing under the water so important to you and me, and as a matter of fact to all of us on the planet? Think New York City, Hong Kong and Paris. Just like a city to us, within their complex and beautiful structures, reefs are a habitat for a quarter of all forms of marine life on Earth. Here these can spawn, grow and live. This is relevant since almost 1 billion people, that's 1 in 8 of us, live close to coastlines and will directly depend from reefs for food. But it's not only about fishing, think about all those countries benefiting from reef tourism and the billions of dollars spent every year on dream holidays to see coral reefs. Reefs also absorb almost 98% of wave energy coming from the sea, reducing the damage in case of storms, hurricanes and tsunamis. This is why places like the Maldives, Seychelles and many others can exist in the first place. And finally, thanks to studying corals and reef organisms, scientists keep discovering and developing new medicines and drugs that help our species progress. But all of this only works if a reef and its corals are healthy and alive. To understand why they are in danger, first it is important to understand what corals are. Seeing them under the water you may think they are plants, when in fact they are not. They are animals. Each branch you see in what looks like a plant is made up of thousands of tiny creatures called polyps. Pollution, overfishing, global warming, climate change and human interaction are all factors that put them in great danger. The biggest problem happens when corals bleach literally becoming white and dying shortly after. This is happening to the Great Barrier Reef, the greatest coral reef on Earth, 50% of which is dead. So what can we do to change this? Besides changing the way we live, there is a process called coral farming. This aims to regenerate corals in a safe structure like a frame before getting them to propagate on a reef at a later stage. Where I am right now, there is such a project taking place, and to talk about it and answer all your questions, let me introduce the resident marine biologist, Charlie. You had some questions? Why did you choose to set this project up? Well, um, in 2016, here in the Maldives and around the world, actually, there was a really big mass bleaching event. Um, a lot of places like the Great Barrier Reef were badly affected, but here particularly, just on our house reef, it was uh, completely devastating. But what did you have to consider? Uh, it's important to consider a lot of things. So we looked at the current, the temperature, where in the reef you can put a project like this because some corals prefer shallow lagoons and some corals prefer deep. So it's also important to spread the project. The old saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket is especially true with coral projects. So we have some at different depths in different locations to try and maximize uh, the security of our corals. Uh, how did you grow the coral? So corals need something to grow on. Normally that would be rock or a hard substrate. For us we used uh, an artificial structure. Uh, in our case we used frames because we still had some from an old project. This allows the coral to self-attach after a certain while and for us it keeps us in a, a nice place that we can monitor their health and really kind of help us collect the data in a strategic way. What type of corals do you grow? Okay, once the frames are in place, we're looking for corals of opportunity. These are corals that are on the reef already and they might be dying because they are in a bad place or they've been turned over by like a big trigger fish or something. So we take the corals that are looking like they're maybe in trouble already and are going to die and we give them a new lease of life on our frames. Uh, and so in this way we don't harm the current reef, 
and we are only having positive impacts and not negatively affecting it while we're trying to protect it. We were specifically looking for table coral and staghorn coral. Uh, if you take a snorkel on our reef, you'll see that these were very prominent five or six years ago before the bleaching event, and you can still see their skeletons. These corals are quite hardy, they, so they can be easier to grow, and they provide a large surface area in which the fish can hide and stuff. So it's a really good place to start. Can you explain the process of planting the coral? Sure. So uh, once uh, we collect the corals, uh, what we do is a thing called fragmentation. And this is basically breaking apart the coral into smaller pieces. This allows us to get more pieces out of one coral, and it also uh, encourages higher growth rates, sometimes up to five times more. So we'll take the coral that we have, fragment it down and it also makes it easier for us to attach to the frames. If you're looking at a coral of opportunity, you can break up to 10% of it off and it won't affect the reproductory status of that coral. But in some cases with the coral that was almost dying, you can break it up into many pieces and then you can use that to really fill a frame. There are many other ways that you can do this, but on a place like this where we have quite limited resources, we can only use what's available to us. So for us, we've used just cable ties and uh, simple frames. How can you ensure that your corals don't bleach as well? That's a very good question. It's really important to identify special corals. Uh, we call them super corals. And these are corals that are more thermotolerant to the temperatures. The way we do this is in uh, April, we had a big bleaching event. Uh, luckily, it wasn't so bad and everything recovered. But during that time, you can see the more resilient corals amongst the other corals that have bleached. And uh, we target a very small portion of these and bring them to our frames after the corals have recovered and they can withstand this type of stress. And we use these to help give the corals a more long-term resilience to these kind of effects. How will a project like this help the reef? Well, in many ways, you could argue what we're doing is the same as the natural process. But in the current state that it's in, what we're doing is enhancing that natural selection. The real challenge for corals is that they can't adapt quick enough to the changes. So almost what we're doing is um, helping them keep up with the changes that they are facing. Um, and the real success of a project like this is when the super corals that we have selected, when they start to breed themselves and they create the next generation of more genetically diverse corals, that is the real success of a project like this because that will then create the long-term sustainability that we can see with them with that quicker action that may naturally take a hundred years to uh, occur. Will this solve the problems that the corals face? Hmm. This is something that is definitely short-term. What we're doing essentially is buying time for corals. We can do all this work and in five years time, if the temperatures rise too much, that's five years work just undone. So we are simply buying time for coral. So the real success is a combination of what we're doing here and a societal change where we start reducing our carbon footprint and ultimately reversing the effects of climate change. Are coral reefs really worth saving? I think that's a very good question and I think actually it's a bigger question because when we look at all our ecosystems we see them as an optional extra and that mentality has got us where we are today, the global pandemics, the wildfires. These ecosystems are more than areas of natural beauty and biodiversity, they are our buffer. They are what gives us life on earth, oxygen that we breathe, the weather on the planet is all controlled by our oceans and everything is a in balance and the reef is part of that cycle. We're disrupting the balance and as a consequence it's coming back on us. So we need to find a way that in the future we can still live our lives but in a way that doesn't damage the ecosystems around us and ultimately ourselves. So you heard it, we are merely buying time and even if some of us don't seem to believe this, if this year has something to teach us that is probably that we must become active in producing positive change. If you liked the episode, subscribe to the channel and leave us a thumbs up. And if you find the topic interesting, we suggest you go on Netflix or YouTube and take a look at Chasing Coral, an excellent documentary about how our reefs are vanishing and what impact this has on us. So finally, until next time, and as usual, keep your souls wet. <laughs>